June 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Chronicles, chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Togarma. The sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, the Kittites, and the Rhodonites. The sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put and Canaan, the sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rama, and Sabtica, the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. Cush was the father of Nimrod, who established himself as a mighty warrior on earth. Mizraim was the father of the Ludites, Anamites, Lahabites, Naphtahites, Pathrusites, Kasluhites, from whom the Philistines descended, and the Kaphtarites. Canaan was the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, as well as the Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemorites, and Hamathites. The sons of Shem, Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Uz, Hull, Gether, and Meshach. Arphaxad was the father of Shelah, and Shelah was the father of Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. The first was named Peleg, for during his lifetime the earth was divided. His brother's name was Joktan. Joktan was the father of Almodad, Shelif, Hazer Maveth, Jira, Hadoram, Uzal, Dikla, Ebal, Abimiel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. Shem, Arphaxad, Shela, Eber, Peleg, Reu, Sirug, Nahar, Tira, Abram, that is Abraham. The sons of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael, these were their descendants. Ishmael's firstborn son was Nebaioth. The others were Kedar, Abiel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Nafish, and Kadima. These were the sons of Ishmael. The sons to whom Keturah, Abraham's concubine, gave birth, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, Shua. The sons of Jokshan, Sheba, and Dedan, the sons of Midian, Epha, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Eldea, all these were the sons of Keturah. Abraham was the father of Isaac, the sons of Isaac, Esau, and Israel, the sons of Esau, Eliphaz, Ruel, Jeush, Jalem, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz, Timon, Omar, Zephi, Gatim, Kenaz, and, by Timna, Amalek. The sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zerah, Shama, and Mizah. The sons of Seir, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan. 
the sons of Lotan, Horai, and Homam. Timnah was Lotan's sister. The sons of Shobal, Elion, Manaheth, Ebal, Shephi, and Onam. The sons of Zibion, Ea, and Ana. The son of Ana, Dishon. The sons of Dishon, Hamran, Eshbon, Ithran, and Kiran. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zeavon, Jaakin, the sons of Dishon, Uz, and Aaron. These were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king ruled over the Israelites. Bela, son of Beor, the name of his city was Dinaba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah from Basra, succeeded him. When Jobab died, Husham from the land of the Temanites succeeded him. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Bedad, succeeded him. He struck down the Midianites in the plains of Moab. The name of his city was Avith. When Hadad died, Samla from Masrika succeeded him. When Samla died, Shal from Rehoboth on the river succeeded him. When Shal died, Baal Hanan, son of Akbar, succeeded him. When Baal Hanan died, Hadad succeeded him. The name of his city was Pei. His wife was Mehetabal, daughter of Matred, daughter of Mizahab. Hadad died. The tribal chiefs of Edom were Timnah, Alva, Jetheth, Aholabama, Elah, Pinan, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Megdiel, Iram. These were the tribal chiefs of Edom. These were the sons of Israel, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, and Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The sons of Judah, Ur, Onan, and Shelah. These three were born to him by Bathsheba, a Canaanite woman. Ur, Judah's firstborn, displeased the Lord, so the Lord killed him. Tamar, Judah's daughter-in-law, bore to him Perez and Zerah. Judah had five sons in all. The sons of Perez, Hezron and Hamel. The sons of Zerah, Zimri, Ethan, Hemon, Calcal, Dara, five in all. The son of Carmi, Achan, who brought the disaster on Israel when he stole what was devoted to God. The son of Ethan, Azariah. The sons born to Hezron, Jeremiel, Ram, and Caleb. Ram was the father of Amminadab, and Amminadab was the father of Nashon, the tribal chief of Judah. Nashon was the father of Salma, and Salma was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed, and Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of Eliab, his firstborn. Abinadab was born second, Shimea third, Nethanel fourth, Radai fifth. Ozem sixth, David seventh. Their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. Zeruiah's three sons were Abshai, Joab, and Asahel. Abigail bore Amasa, whose father was Jether the Ishmaelite. Caleb, son of Hezron, fathered sons by his wife, Azuba, also known as Jerioth. Her sons were Jeshur, Shobab, and Arden. When Azuba died, Caleb married Ephrath, who bore him Hur. Hur was the father of Uri, and Uri was the father of Bezalel. Later, Hezron had sexual relations with the daughter of Maker, the father of Gilead. He had married her when he was sixty years old. She bore him Segub. 
Segub was the father of Jair, who owned 23 cities in the land of Gilead. Geshur and Aram captured the towns of Jair, along with Kenneth, and its 60 surrounding towns. All these were descendants of Maker, the father of Gilead. After Hezron's death, Caleb had sexual relations with Ephrath, his father Hezron's widow, and she bore to him Asher, the father of Tekoa. The sons of Jeremiel, Hezron's firstborn, were Ram, the firstborn, Buna, Oren, Ozam, and Ahijah. Jeremiel had another wife named Atara. She was Onam's mother. The sons of Ram, Jeremiel's firstborn, were Maaz, Jamin, and Eker. The sons of Onam were Shammai and Jada. The sons of Shammai, Nadab, and Abishur. Abishur's wife was Abihail, who bore him Oppen and Molid. The sons of Nadab, Selid and Appium. Selid died without having sons. The son of Appium, Ishai. The son of Ishai, Shishan. The son of Shishan, Alai. The sons of Jada, Shammai's brother, Jether and Jonathan. Jether died without having sons. The sons of Jonathan, Peleth and Zaza. These were the descendants of Jeremiel. Shishan had no sons, only daughters. Shishan had an Egyptian servant named Jarha. Shishan gave his daughter to his servant Jarha as a wife. She bore him Atai. Atai was the father of Nathan, and Nathan was the father of Zabad. Zabad was the father of Ephlau, and Ephlau was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jehu, and Jehu was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Heliz, and Heliz was the father of Eliasa. Eliasa was the father of Sisme, and Sisme was the father of Shalom. Shalom was the father of Jechemiah, and Jechemiah was the father of Elishama. The sons of Caleb, Jeremiel's brother, his firstborn, Misha, the father of Ziph, and his second son, Marisha, the father of Hebron. The sons of Hebron, Korah, Tapua, Recom, and Shema. Shema was the father of Raham, the father of Jorkeum. Recom was the father of Shammai. Shammai's son was Maon, who was the father of Bethzer. Caleb's concubine Ephah bore Haran, Moza, and Gazes. Haran was the father of Gazes. The sons of Jodai, Regum, Jotham, Gishon, Pelet, Ephah, and Sheaf. Caleb's concubine Maaka bore Sheber and Terhana. She also bore Sheaf the father of Madmana, and Shiva, the father of Machbina, and Gibeah. Caleb's daughter was Aksa. These were the descendants of Caleb. The sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrath, Shobal, the father of kiriath Jerem, Salma, the father of Bethlehem, Hareph, the father of beth Gader. The sons of Shobal, the father of Curious Jerem, were Haroah, half of the Manahathites, the clans of Curious Jerem, the Ithrites, Puthites, Shumathites, and Mishraites. The Zorathites and Eshtolites descended from these groups. The sons of Salma, Bethlehem, the Natufathites, Atroth, Beth Joab, half the Manahathites, the Zorites, and the clans of the scribes who lived in Jabez, the Tirathites, Shimeathites, and Succothites. These are the Kenites who descended from Hamath, the father of Beth Rechab. God, I love how this uh, 
first chapter of First Chronicles starts off. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan. <laughs> There's not even a preamble. It's just an acknowledgement of what people should have already known. They, they would have read this list and instantly known who these people were, even though these people lived so long ago from when the people reading this, when First Chronicles was first written, it would have been so long after they had already passed away. And I love that, that there was this feeling, even though a, a huge part of the people at that time had gone away from you, they were worshiping idols, uh, they didn't follow the Mosaic law. Even with all of that, here we have a list that everyone should know who these people are. And I think it's kind of funny because I wonder if we gave this list to churchgoers, Christian churchgoers nowadays, if they would know these people on the list, if they would be able to go, oh yeah, that's from the Bible and these are these people and this is this father and this person did this. I wonder if we would actually know. Um, I know some of them. Um, I know some of the rest from doing daily video Bible. Uh, but back then, this list didn't need a preamble. And I think that speaks volumes to your desire for us to read your word. You created a living document for us to live our lives by. Y you know me, I call it a love letter. It's as though I had a father who died before I was born. And he wrote me this amazing book on how I should live my life and what he thought of me uh, and how I even came into, into the world. And so it's this beautiful love letter from you. And how could we not want to devour a love letter from our very own father? People always tell me, well, you know, the Bible's, the Bible's kind of boring. And yeah, reading, <laughs> reading like lists like this is not only kind of boring, but it's very hard to do. But I think once we get past that and we ask you to open our eyes to what the totality of the Bible's trying to tell us, it is a guide that will lay out the foundation of where you want us to go, what your will is in, in our lives. People are always like, oh, I don't know what God's trying to tell me. I don't know where he's leading me. I can't hear him. Well, have you read your Bible lately? <laughs> I know anytime that I am not in the word daily, I'm not praying daily, um, I'm getting caught up in my own world. It's then and there that I start to get lost. I start to flounder without that constant focus on you, God, without that constant focus on your word, uh, my life not only spirals a little bit out of control, but I start making really bad choices uh, that are all about me and what I want as opposed to your will. So I love this reminder in First Chronicles that it starts off with a list. There's no preamble as to who the list is. It just starts off with these are the men that you should know about because it's important, not just for the beginning of this book, but for the entire Bible of understanding all of these touch points, all of these people and what they did and why they were so important to you, God. And even the people that are in here who didn't follow your will teach us sometimes even more than the people who did follow your will. God, help us to go back to your word. Help us to go back to what you have created for us to teach us how to live our lives. You know, I met a person recently that, that knows the Bible incredibly well. And what's amazing to me is there's not that opposite piece of it. He knows the Bible so incredibly well, yet there's not that relationship with you that goes along with it. So God, help us to sit down before we read your word and say, God, just show me what it is you want me to see. Open up my heart. Open up my mind. Take these filters down and allow me to see what you want me to see. And then the next step, show me what I need to do with this information. Allow me not to just be passive as reading a book. That's not going to help to be able to spout a bunch of facts and figures. But how do I incorporate this into my life? How does a whole list of names, the father of, who was part of this town or part of this city, who didn't have any, any sons, but he had a daughter, how does all of that fit into my life? How can I actually put it into practice today? Well, first and foremost, 
the very first verse in this chapter, taking a look at that and realizing there is intentionally a reason that there's no preamble as to why the person who wrote First Chronicles is writing it this way. There just is an acknowledgement that you should know who this is. So what does that mean in your daily life? Allow God to move in your heart and to move in your mind and show him what he needs you to know. Maybe you need to know this genealogy. I hope not, but <laughs> maybe you need to know this genealogy. Maybe it's something to do with, with your life. Maybe certain pieces need to be put together for you. I don't know. But I do know that you know God and you know for the people who are listening to this video right now that you can change their hearts, that you can change their minds as long as they're open to what your word says. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love letters to me. I know sometimes we gloss over things like chronicles because there are lists and lists and lists of genealogies and battles and second chronicles we get into list of kings and um, sometimes we just gloss right over those and we don't pay attention to them but every single part of the bible i know you wrote intentionally for us to pay attention to at different times during different parts of our lives all of it is going to be a piece of the puzzle that we need god allow us to sit down today and open up your word or watch it on video have us pray beforehand to you to open up our minds and our hearts to what it is that you're trying to tell us and then give us the strength to incorporate it into our lives. What do we need to learn? What do we need to know? How do we put it into practice? What do we need to do today to put into play what it is that you just showed us? God, communicate with us. Allow us to be who you need us to be here on earth. And it's only through knowing your word that we can do that. In your son's name I pray, amen.